It's Friday, January 12th, 2023. We've got three winning days in a row on the channel, baby. Let's go. We're heating up this month of January. And listen, we've got a full slate of games today for you. I've got a few best bets for you. Let's dive into it. What's up? It's your boy, Noble Living, back with another DYF. That's video where I'm breaking down my favorite piece of plays today as we try to get to the bag together and make some money. Now, yesterday, I kind of changed it up a little bit. Some guys sent messages me to the Discord group saying they loved the new YouTube video, kind of how I broke down some of the research process. So hopefully, you guys found that beneficial and that was helpful for you all. And I gave out ton of different plays yesterday i mean they were all money line and yes there was a lot of them with juice but we still were able to go two and one on the day we cashed on sanford and fau money line i mean that fau was a sweat i don't know about that team right now i'm not even going to touch them but hey we cashed it we cashed on the utah first half app state and chattanooga money line parlay so those two parlays cashed in that's five bets right there that we cashed in we did lose on Gonzaga first half as they end up losing outright. I don't know what's going on there with that Gonzaga team this year. And then we did win on Washington, but we took them on the money line parlay, so we did lose that parlay. So two and one of the day. Your today record right here, over 500 in the month of January. So you love to see that. And listen, this weekend, guys, I'm gonna give you guys a best bet in every single NFL football playoff game, okay? So make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you support the channel by clicking that like button. And if you wanna get those other picks and plays that I'm dropping this weekend, make sure you join our free Discord group that I'll put out one pick for every nfl game this weekend i'll do a two shorts tomorrow and i'll do a few shorts on sunday as well for you guys on those games and then you guys know the vibes on monday fly eagles fly gang we're going to be taking it home all right so let's dive into these first best bets of the day for my first best bet of the day, not gonna lie to you guys too much. This college slate, I'm not the biggest fan of. I've got to dive in a little bit later on today, so that's why you have to join the Discord group to get some of the updated plays. But one play that I really do like is I want to go to the most interesting game of the night, and that's Nebraska and Iowa. Nebraska's coming off their biggest win of this resurgent season for them by picking up a home conference win over number one Purdue on Tuesday. I mean that game was electric. Now they have to travel to Iowa to take on this Hawkeyes team who just picked up their first conference win against Rutgers on last Saturday. So I. I'm going to be interested to see what side people are picking when they choose this game. I feel like a lot of the public and novice betters are going to be choosing Nebraska. Obviously, they just beat the number one team in the country. So they're like, oh, they got to beat Iowa, a team that's one and three in conference. But we can see right now that the line has moved in favor of Iowa. It opened up at three and a half in favor of Iowa. Now it's at four and a half on certain books are in favor of Iowa. I don't know if I can necessarily take a side in this game because of just the situation. It is a very tough bounce back spot. It's a left down spot for Nebraska. Do I think they cover the four and a half? half point spread because they're a good enough team i do but both of their conference losses have been on the road this year so that means that this won't be an easy matchup for them so i'm just staying off the spread in this one as entirely but one thing that i do think is going to be easy to predict in this game is scoring and both of these offenses can fill it up so because of that i'm going to take nebraska and iowa over 165 and a half you could play it up to 166 and a half as my first best bet of the day now i understand it's a very high total a lot of points need to be scored to go over 166 number here that's literally like 83 points a piece i get it if there's any team that i think you can take high totals with you saw us take one high total with arizona a few weeks ago that missed but iowa is another one of those teams that you can take a high total with iowa six in college basketball on points per game they're averaging close to 87 points per game and this is probably due to how they really like to push the pace they're fifth in the country in tempo and pace of play so you love to see that meanwhile nebraska is not too bad of a slouch on the offensive side themselves they're having 78 points per game and over their last few conference game that numbers jumped up to 82 points per game so we love to see that and keep in mind they just dropped 88 points against purdue a very good defensive purdue team on tuesday so we can see that this team can score the ball nebraska doesn't play nearly as fast as iowa does but they're much more efficient on the offensive side they're ranked 29th in offensive efficiency and they do a really good job of shooting three-pointer led by kisei Tominga, you know the japanese asian style stephen curry that they call him over there and they also shoot it really well from the free throw line and they limit turnovers so you love to see that from the offensive side of nebraska to kind of counteract what Iowa's going to do on offense, which is run the ball, push the pace, try to get the ball inside. They don't shoot as many threes this year as they have done in years past because they don't just really have the three-point talent, but they are still going to try to play really fast and still try to score a ton of points. So because of that, I think both of these teams are going to be able to score. Now, Nebraska definitely does have the much better defense of these two teams, but seeing how this game is at home for Iowa, I see Iowa really being able to establish their pace of play, their tempo here. So that's why I'm leaning towards the over in this one. I'm leaning towards 
towards the offense here and both of these teams have been over teams as well i was 11 and 4 to the over this year and six out of the last seven games have gone over nebraska is 10 and 6 to the over this year and their last five games have gone over so for me all the trends are saying take the over all the offensive and all the numbers say take the over so that's what i'm gonna do i know it's a high total to for us today but i like it nebraska and iowa are over 165 and a half as our first best bet of the day now for our second best bet of the day i'm gonna give you two best bets but they're gonna be kind of like leans i'm gonna take them i'm gonna put money on them but depending on how you do your unit management i would like if you're gonna put two units on iowa nebraska then maybe do one unit on these two picks because it's the nba i haven't really been putting out a lot of nba bets over the past week or so because it's just like i'm in full college basketball swing but there are a few nba games that i like today especially because college basketball slate's a little muddy today but i want to ease my way back into the nba because i just haven't been tracking it every single day in and out and every player and everything like that okay so the first thing i want to do is i want to go with the team total here and you might be a team total that you don't agree with and i get it but this situation just makes sense to me i'm gonna go with the team total indiana pacers under 122 and a half minus 105 odds now if you can get it at 123 and a half or if this line moves throughout the day be my guest grab it if you want to fade me be my guest i'm not mad at it indiana pacers are traveling to atlanta today to take the hawks now the hawks are absolutely god awful on defense they're bottom five in the nba in terms of points allowed they're giving up like close to 125 130 points per game but why are you taking the under though well, that makes no sense because for me the pacers don't have tyrese halliburton and i get that he's not the end all be all for this team but the thing is he doesn't only contribute a ton of points being their leading scorer averaging over 25 points per game but he's also their leading assist guy in their playmaker averaging over 11 or assists a game so that's a, just a big hit to this team offensively and yes i understand the hawks don't play a lot of defense but the question for me becomes who's going to score on this team if halliburton is not playing if he's not facilitating the ball dime in the rock now yes they do have miles turner yes they do have benedict mather and yes they do have buddy healed obi top and they do have other guys who can score can they put up 123 points up on the hawks I'm not 100% sure about that. Now, I looked up the game logs for the Pacers this year. They played four games this season without Tyrese Halliburton. Let's look at it, okay? The first game they played was back in November against the Boston Celtics. They only scored 104 points. They lost that game 104 to 155. So, I get it. Boston Celtics, contender. All right, let's move on. They played Miami Heat. They scored 144 points in that game without Tyrese Halliburton. So, I mean, clearly flew over this total. But if you dive into the game log a little bit deeper, Bruce Brown had a career high 30 points 11 to 16 from the field 4 to 6 from the three-point line obi toppin 20 points from the field 20 points 7 of 8 from the field 4 of 5 from the three-point line benedict matherin 16 points aaron naismith 22 points tj mcconnell 20 points tj mcconnell shot 10 of 11 from the field aaron naismith shot 7 and 9 from the field so this is the thing they dropped 144 points, but they shot the ball at a crazy efficient rate. 66% from the field that they shot the ball from that game, 50% from the three-point line. That is not sustainable. I mean, can it happen against the Hawks? Yes, because they're that bad defensively. I just don't think it's going to happen. Now, they played Minnesota earlier in December without Tyrese Halliburton. They only scored 109 points that game. And then last game against the Wizards, who's just equally as bad as the Hawks defensively, they only scored 112 points. They won that game 112 to 104. So you're probably saying, no, but why don't you take the overall under? The reason I don't take the overall under is because the Pacers just smacked the Hawks. Literally like 150 to 116. So the thing is, this could be a flip in this scenario where the Hawks drop 140 on the Pacers and the Pacers only score 120, 115. But guess what? That will still go over this 251, 252 total here. So that's why I like the team total for the Pacers under and not just the Hawks and the full game under here. So for me, I'm just going to go with the angle here that the Pacers have gone over this total in three of the four games without Tyrese Halliburton. The one time they went over, they shot at 66% from the field, 50% from the three-point line. I don't think that's going to happen again today. So give me the team total for the Pacers under 122 and a half as our best bet but again the odds on my book is minus 105 so make sure you shop around because you might be able to get 123 and a half so that's my second best bet of the day now for my third best bet of the day there's another caveat to this bet and I'm going to look at the Spurs and I'm going to look at the Hornets matchup now the Hornets are traveling to San Antonio to take on the Spurs and the spread in this game is minus two in favor of the Spurs I like that I like the way the Spurs are playing right now I like the way the Wemby looks especially at home but this is the thing is Wemby playing because the Spurs have a back-to-back -to -back tomorrow 
Hollow Knight. So this is the thing. Wemby has not played any back-to-backs this season yet, and he has not been cleared to play back-to-backs this season yet. So this is the thing. They got this game against Charlotte tonight, and they play the Bulls tomorrow night. I don't know which one of the two games that he plays. For me, I think he plays tonight and he rests tomorrow night. So if Wemby plays tonight, I'm taking the Spurs minus two, minus one and a half for them to get the outright win. Take the money line as well if you want to, be my guest. But the Spurs win this game at home against a very piss poor Charlotte team that absolutely sucks. Probably the like worst team in the entire NBA besides like, I mean, maybe the Hawks, right? Like, I mean, they're just terrible. They can't stop anybody. And the way that Wemby has been playing, the confidence that he's had of late, you love to to see that you love to back that and for me I, I took the Spurs in their last game against Detroit another team that's equally as bad so normally when I'm handicapping these like bad teams on the bottom half of the league any team can win it obviously it's the NBA but one thing that I look at is like all right the team like the Spurs they're gonna wake up for a game against the Pistons because this is a game they can actually win you get what I'm saying now when they're playing against teams like the Warriors or the Clippers or the Lakers it's a little bit tougher yeah they want to show up against LeBron yeah they want to show up against Giannis but also at the same time it's a little bit harder to say we're gonna win those games they beat Detroit 130 to 108 that game was not close and that was on the road as well now keep in mind Detroit sucks but Charlotte to me is not that much better than them especially with all the injuries that the Charlotte team might have Gordon Hayward's out for this game PJ Washington's doubtful they're still out with LaMelo Ball Cody Martin's still not playing Mark Williams is out there's a lot of guys in this lineup who are not playing so for me I'm just gonna go with The Spurs on the money line or minus one and a half here to win this game at home, but it is contingent on Wimby playing. If Wimby is not playing, then it's a chalk. Don't take the bet. But if Wimby is playing, and again, injury news never comes out in the NBA until like two minutes before tip-off time. So, you you know, you guys do your due diligence on that. So I'm going to go with the Spurs. That's the bet. So those are three best bets of the day. We're going to go with the over in the Iowa-Nebraska game. We're going to go with the team total under for the Pacers. And then we're going to go with the Spurs on the money line or on the spread minus one and a half to win at home today. But again, that is contingent on if Wimby plays or not. All right, my friends, that was the three best bets, two NBA, one college basketball. I'm going to have a few other college basketball plays inside the Discord group. So make sure you guys click that link in the bio, join the free group so you can get those wins. All right, my friends, let's continue to get to the money. We've had three straight winning days in a row. Hopefully we can make it four and then we can go into wild card weekend super excited to rack it up in the nfl right my friends let's have a great weekend let's have a great day get to that money dictate your fate and i'll see y'all tomorrow later gang